Hey guys, Chris here again from CNC Labs with five more tips for how you can get the most out of Gsender and your CNC experience. So let's just jump into it. The first thing that I'm gonna be showing you today is something that you've probably never tried before, which is probing and a particular aspect of probing. I'm sure you guys have all used a touch plate before, whether it's our standard block touch plate, the Auto Zero touch plate, or any other type of touch plate that your CNC machine might use. If it's a corner probing touch plate that can find not just Z, but the X and the Y directions as well, we actually put in the ability for you to probe off different corners. Normally, it's set up to go off the front left corner of your material, but you can actually change that very easily here. There's a little toggle, and all you have to do is click it, and it's gonna rotate, and now the blue is on the back left corner, and now that's actually where you can set up to probe. The same for the back right, and the same for the front right. So this allows you to actually take your probing routine that normally runs, and run it off any other corner that you want. Now, you might be wondering why would you choose to do that? Honestly, it really just comes down to how you set your CNC machine up in your own shop. For most people, the front left makes the most sense because they run their computer at the front left and uh, they've kind of set up their shop that way. But some people, for instance, if they set their machine up vertically, then you might want to do the back left so that the touch plate can kind of use gravity to sit, sit on top of the material. Or maybe you went for the direction of putting your uh, electronics on the right side of your machine, in which case it might make more sense to probe off the front right. Now our next tip, is we're gonna go into our settings here and I'm gonna show you how uh, Gsender actually supports tool changing uh, fully on its own. This would be if you have a tool length setter like the bit setter uh, from Carbide 3D or if you have any other um, tool length sensing um, sensor that you can just buy from a third party. This supports all of those as well as even if you just have a touch plate. All you have to do is you can hit the drop down here and you can do for instance the fixed tool sensor strategy and um, I won't show you the whole setup but basically this allows you to go in tell G-Sender where the position of that sensor is and if you've set up your post processor um, for your G-Code to have M6 commands with the tool change then uh, when Gsender sees those, it'll take you to that location, prompt you to change the bit, and then it'll re-zero and run the next segment of the job. We even have a little wizard that pops up and it guides you through the whole process. If you uh, don't have a tool length sensor, but you have regular touch plate, you can also use what we've called the flexible re-zero or the standard re-zero. And um, those we have a lot of documentation on, but basically they allow you to do the same method for tool changing where you re-zero your z-axis but using a touch plate instead of a tool length sensor. Give it a try on your next project and uh, see what you think. Now related to that second tip, my third tip is what we call program events. And I know this is also kind of technical but hear me out because these are very useful. Basically I go to my settings and I go to the program events and you can see there's four different boxes and what these four boxes allow you to do is put in custom G-code uh, whenever you start a file, finish a file, or you pause it, or you resume it. The reason why this is useful is because if you have custom accessories on your CNC machine, like a spindle or an IoT relay, you'll want these to be turning on and off anytime you're running stuff. And usually the only way you can do that is by editing your post-processor um, when you generate the G-code. Um, but even in that case, let's say you were to pause partway through a job, then there's no G-code that's running there to tell your IoT relay or your spindle to turn off. So this is where this comes in handy. You can see I've pre-populated these boxes so that whenever I start or resume a job, it turns the spindle on. And whenever I pause or stop a job, it turns the spindle off. Uh, the stop also applies whenever you finish a job. So all I'm going to have to do now is, uh, actually, I'll have these disabled for a second, and I'll start this job off here, this sheep job, just to show you that when I run it normally, nothing turns on. So you can see there is no uh, spindle command to turn it on, so it's just running around um, as it would running the G-code file that it's been given. So now if I stop that, and then I go into my settings, and I turn those events on, 
and then I run the same file. Now you can see it takes the time to actually turn the spindle on and then start cutting it. And this shows how powerful those events can be to basically customize the behavior of your machine to whatever you want it to be. Not only can you use them to, for instance, turn on and off accessories at will, even if it's not explicitly put into the G code that you're generating from your CAM software, but you can also do basically any other customized thing you want with your machine. I could put it so that at the end of every G code file, it moves to the back corner automatically. I could put it so that at the start of every G code file, it has a bit of a long delay so that I can Think about, have I set everything up correctly before it actually goes and runs? Um, really anything you want it to do, um, you can put it in those events and it'll do it. In terms of customizing your machine for your own personal setup or if you're trying to do any sort of uh, shop work or uh, manufacturing work on it, um, just tuning it to your specifications uh, when you set it up to run. So that leads into tip number four, which I would also say is a very powerful feature. The best way I can kind of demonstrate it is to actually start running this job and then interrupt it part way through. And I'm gonna go and I'm gonna start this job here. You might have been in this situation before where your, your job is running on your CNC and then for one reason or another you lose power, you lose a connection to the machine, what have you. You can see here, we're about 200 lines into cutting this job, and I'm just gonna yank this USB cable here. And very quickly, the machine is still running the parts that has already been sent to it, but very quickly, G-Sender has recognized that it's become disconnected from the machine. So we're gonna give it a second for the machine to recognize that there's actually nothing left to run. So now you can see that it has run out of commands from the computer and it's stuck. It's like, I'm not connected to a computer anymore. And G-Senders actually recognize as well that you become disconnected. So I'm gonna plug this back in. First of all, what G-Sender is gonna try to do is see if it can reconnect to that machine and resume cutting from that line. And now you can see it did manage to reconnect but not resume cutting, but it's prompting us here to say, hey, use this feature. And uh, this is the feature here. It's called Start From Line, and it allows you to basically recover your carve. It tells you how you lost connection to your machine, and it actually kept track of the last line that was sent to the machine in the G-code file, which it's saying was line 219. And basically, now that we know what line it started from, we can just start cutting again on that same file from that line, or if you think it missed something, you could enter in any of your own line numbers, like let's say I wanna go back a couple lines and start from line 205. I can now just hit start from line, and now you can see in the visualizer, it's already considered that center part cut out that we already cut out, and it's resumed cutting from there. And that's all you have to do. Even if you're not hit, I'll stop this here, even if you never see the prompt that you've disconnected, this start from line option is always available. It's just that corner button there and it pops up. This is very useful not just to resume a file when it's gotten disconnected on the USB, but let's say you lost power at your place partway through a carve. You can just uh, use your touch plate to re-zero or you can re-home your machine. Find your zero point again. If you uh, re-home, you shouldn't need to find it. If you use a touch plate, you'll just need to re-zero off the same corner. And then you can just go straight into here and tell it to resume carving and it should be able to find its place again. Um, it's also useful if um, for whatever reason you just want to start a carve later on of a G-code file you've already made, uh, then you can just skip along and start basically anywhere you want. This accounts for all of the movements leading up to that point. It accounts for whether the spindle needs to turn on or off. All the stuff that you'd normally need to take care of, it just takes care of that for you. Now, just to end off on an easier tip, um, maybe only advanced people might, like, might use this, but um, I am one of those advanced users personally. Um, this would be for people who tend to use the console in G-Center. So tip number five, it's very simple, and it's basically that if you've ever typed commands into the console before, so let's say um, I wanna move the router by 50 millimeters. So I'll just do a G91, G0, X50, 
50 millimeters and at a speed of like 3,000 millimeters per minute. Oops, 3,000 millimeters per minute. So there we go, I just got the movement. And now if I want to uh, recall the prior commands I've made in the console, all you have to do is press the up arrow when you're selected on the console here, press the up arrow. And now it's brought back that same command that I just did. So I can run it again if I'd like. Um, and that actually applies to all prior commands that you've made. You can see if I keep tapping up this arrow, you can see it keeps going. And if I want to go press the down arrow, it takes me back to the closer in history commands. And this can be very useful because if, for instance, I have made this uh, X 50 millimeter movement, and now I want to do a Y 50 millimeter movement, then all I have to do is press the up arrow to recall the command, and then move over and just change the X into a Y, and then send the Y command, and now it's done the Y movement. And this saves a lot of uh, retyping, or if you send a lot of commands commonly through the console, you can just recall them rather than having to retype them every time. And that concludes our uh, video for today. Thank you guys for coming in and checking out these tips. I hope you learned something. Let us know in the comments which ones were your favorite or maybe that you want us to elaborate on. And keep an eye out for another tips video coming soon. I'll see you later. We've got a brand new version of G-Sender ready for release. You can go and download it now.